in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, uh, Daily Motion, and perhaps many other places, because I have to have it like that <laughs> for my own survival. <laughs> Ooh, it's just so funny that little old me gets a lot of folks upset that they spend all day and all night plotting, doing whatever they can to silence this voice. And we're going to talk about this voice in just a second. But I am. So let me, and please give me the honor of finishing my introduction. I am the mighty, mighty. Mighty mm. Angel Snub number seven. I'm your brother and hopefully your friend Talik Ibn Ra. I'm sort of tired, a little bit fatigued, but I wanted to share a few words and share a little good news with those of you of whom have been listening to this voice for so long. I want to talk to those of us who face forces that we believe is so great that we cannot or we believe that we have no chance of defeat. So it is easier for us to try to play their game. But if we want to play their game, then we must know the rules of that game. But brothers and sisters, unfortunately for us, ever since stepping upon the soil of this place called North America, we were brought into a game, never given a peace, never told the rules, we just been a big loser in this game. So if you don't have a piece to place on the board, if you don't know the rules of the game, then we have to just play it by ear. Trial and error. And once you begin to figure out what the rules are and you gain a piece to place on the board, then you have to begin to take over the game from those who created the game that designed the game to make sure you and I are always a loser. This is much like if you are in a confrontation with a robber and that robber pulls a gun on you but you're able to take that gun away from the robber and use the robber's own gun against him or her. Usually, it's a him. Because <laughs> women will rob you too. But of course, as we know, most times, it's a male. But regardless, male or female, you take their gun and you turn it on them. So here we are against a very wicked people, devious, they are the masters of trickology. They know how to smile. And we might talk about that later on too. They know how to smile while they stab you in the back. And I'm so happy to share later on with you and provide proof of the victory that this ministry has just gained by winning a $5,000 judgment against YouTube. And I got some more for you, YouTube. If that's not enough, then let us keep going down the legal road. You know where that's going to go. Continue to harass and stalk and terminate this channel. 
Keep harassing me. Keep stalking me. We got one victory. We can use some more. I want to show that we have formed our own playing piece. I want to show that we have learned the rules of your game. And now, like the victim, we're going to take the robber's gun and use the robber's gun, the robber's weapon against the robber whose intention was to cause us physical harm. To take what was not his by force. And perhaps use that gun to cause us bodily harm. Us or our family. And this is my family and I only exist so that I can be an example to family that you don't have to fear these bullies anymore. You don't have to scratch where you don't itch no more. You just don't know or understand the power that is at your disposal. You don't have to act tough. You really don't have to be that smart. Just, a, just take advantage of the resources that the oppressor gives you. And then put him, put the devil on the uh, defensive while you stay on the offense. Keep him running. Keep him rolling. Keep him acting like a chicken with his head cut off. We want to cut the head off the snake. And if we take advantage of these tools that the enemy has given us, you just don't understand your own power. But it is a wonderful day. And where are these people who will be laughing, making mockery? I will show you in just a few minutes the actual proof of this victory. This $5,000 judgment, I don't care if it was a $1 judgment, this little YouTube ministry come up against Big Bad Google. And Google lost. And I have a win under my belt. But if we come together, you just don't understand the reward, the great reward that is for you, black man and woman of America. But you got to stop fearing these forces because they are not as tough. They are not as powerful as you believe they are. They are not. And that's where we need men. I want a man. I need a man. But I don't want no man as a lover. I need a man as a warrior. I need a man as a fighter. Somebody who's ready to stand up against a vicious enemy. And there are not that many men out here. But there are many males out here who want to be men. If the, if the men stand up and be an example and reach out to the males and show them you are not female. You are not feminine. You are a warrior. You are a soldier. You are a father. And some of y'all said that we are gods. So let us start acting that way. Okay? <laughs> All right. I want to talk to us very quickly about something as simple as voice. During my years on YouTube, I have had criticism and complaint about my voice. Why do you yell so much, they say? Why do you scream? Why do you holler so much, they say? Now, I want to tell you something very quickly about these who complain, these who uh, criticize my voice. When you are hollering, when you are yelling, when you are saying something that they like, 
It is called preaching. When you are saying something while you are hollering, while you are screaming, it is called teaching. Teach, brother, teach. Preach, brother, preach. When you are saying something that they like. But when you are saying something that they don't like, then it is called, why are you doing all that yelling? I am preaching. Just like any other pastor, I am teaching. Just like any other minister. The problem is, what I am preaching, what I am teaching, is something that is counter what you believe. And since I am pro-realism, and you embrace fantasy and fiction, you do not want to accept your reality, then of course, you don't want to hear somebody that's shaking you, rattling your cage, shaking your bed, because you are asleep. You're like Lazarus in the grave. You like sleeping. You like being on your back. And those who benefit from falsehood, those who benefit from deceit, don't want to hear somebody that's loud and preaching and teaching against that which has made them comfortable. Don't talk about Jesus. I'm comfortable in my Jesus. I know what you're saying is true, but I just want to hold on to my Jesus. I want to hold on to my Muhammad. I want to hold on to Ron Paul. I want to hold on to Mitt Romney. I want to hold on to Obama. I want to hold on to my job or whatever they want to hold on to because they know that they are slaves. And I'm here to bring the 1,000% the end of slavery. The end of it. No more. You should not worship no God. You should not worship no man or no alien. The days of slavery is over. And any God, any force that claims that they love you, don't want you to be a slave. You are a God. You are a life form unto yourself. There is nobody or no thing worthy of you bowing down to. In the scriptures, in religion, it says, give honor to your mother and give honor to your father. And if God is the father, why would God want you to rant and rave and worship, sacrifice and, and flip and flop, scream and holler, spit all over the all over the benches in the church? Why would God want you to do all like that? But it says in these teachings that the only thing that is required for father and mother is simply honor. So I will honor you, Father. I will honor the Creator. Should the Creator prove him or herself to exist, I will honor the mother. I will honor Father and give them credit where credit is due. But I'm not going to be your slave, Daddy. I want to come up out of your house and do my own thing because I'm a child of God. I want to do my own. I want to express my own godliness. That is why in the scriptures or in the churches, in the mosque, in the synagogues, they still call themselves children of God because you are still a child. And children believe in fantasy and fairy tales. So you are comfortable in these fantasy, these fictional fairy tales that you have been fed called religious teaching. This is not to say there is nothing good in religious teaching. But when you have a child like mine, you can't distinguish truth and reality from fantasy and fiction. And in this world, you see how childish people are. And children think on a very low level. 
So on the playground, they have not learned how to solve disputes. So children call another child names. Another child will pick up a stick and take that stick and beat another child upside the head with that stick because children do not know how to. They're, they are immature. And that immaturity continues into adulthood as we see today. So the United States will file sanctions against Iran and threaten Iran with physical force all over the earth. It's constant fighting and murder and war because the people that are supposed to be adults, the people who are supposed to be grown up, the, the people who are supposed to be mature are still infantile. They're still childlike in their mind. And all of us should want to grow beyond those things. Because as long as we are in this great big playpen, you're never going to experience the peace that you claim that you want. So when you are in a place filled with children, there should be an adult present to watch the children, to guide the children, to teach the children right from wrong, to teach the children how to survive in the world that they have been born into. Every child has a father. Every child should have a man in the house. Or the essence of a man in the house. Or in the society. There are no men in the society. You don't actually have to have a man in the house if you have men in the society. Because men in the society understand that every child that's out there belongs to them. I don't have any children, but when I see your young boy, when I see your young girl, I see these young children all around me. They are mine. There's an old African proverb. Some of y'all can could quote it better than I can. It takes a village to raise a child. So it's so that every child that's born is my responsibility, your responsibility. Every child that is born is not only the responsibility of the birth parents, but the responsibility of the village, the responsibility of the nation that that child has been born into. We don't see it that way. I got mine, you get yours. We are, indiv we are individual, we're selfish. So we can brag and talk about Look how dumb your child is. Why don't you help that person that you say have a dumb child? Teach that child. Help nurture that child. You want to brag about what you got. Look at my child. Look at my car. Look at what? Look at, look at me. And you wonder why we are in the state that we are in right now. Mm, mm, mm. Whoo, man. We need a man in the house. So they complain about my voice. Why do you yell? Why do you scream? And again, like I said earlier, if I was saying something that they liked, it's called preaching. So I'm going to continue to preach and I don't give a dang about what y'all are talking about. Because apparently you understand everything that is being said. You understand everything that is being said so clear that you have terminated 60, 6, 1, 60, 60 channels of the Realities Temple Ministry. You want to make sure that this yelling and this screaming, you want to make sure that it is not heard, that it is silenced. Well, I'm going to make it even even more difficult to silence because this ministry has now gone to court and won a judgment against Google for five thousand dollars. So we're gonna talk about it. You know we are. Just hold on now. Let us let us enjoy the company. I know you want me to get straight to to the uh, to the uh, showing the the paperwork on. Uh, the case, but I just want to talk. You know, we, we need to talk. 
because you never know. You never know. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone, so this might be the last time I speak with you. But at least I'm going out with a bang. At least I'm showing us not to be afraid of the powers that we think are so great. And when you face those powers, you will find, and I found out a long time ago, they are not as tough as you think that they are. My voice. They want to talk about my voice. I remember when I was growing up, when I guess there were a few men left, <laughs> Now, when it comes to discipline a child, I remember we could be playing rough and making a lot of noise and clowning around as, as children. And a, a woman, a female, my mother or some female could come into the room and say and tell us, y'all need to quiet down, sit down, go to sleep. And whatever, you know, whatever the instruction that the uh, sister, the mother, or whomever, whatever they was trying to tell us, as children, you know, that's just mama, that's just that lady, and a lot of times, we don't take them seriously, and children keep rolling around, keep doing what they're doing. Now, when I was growing up, when a man came in the room and told you to stop, just the fact that that man talked his voice, because his voice was so deep, his voice was so powerful, something about a man's voice, he did not have to threaten, now he would, later on, if you want to act ignorant, you want to act ignorant, then I'm going to take off my belt, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get the strap out, have to tear a limb off the tree, whatever I need to do, because now, because apparently, just the voice don't get it, but I remember when I was growing up, just the voice of a man would put fear in your heart. Uh-oh, because, well, you knew, first of all, the voice itself scared you. And you knew what would happen if that man had to go beyond talk. <laughs> and, and his physical action hurt worse than mama or some woman. You better pay attention to this man. It was just his voice. The man would walk in the room and just talk. And all the children look up and get quiet. Because a man's speaking. And if you are a man and you are a reflection of God when you speak, then all that which is around you should fall to silence because daddy home, I'm in the house. See, we are afraid of racist Caucasian people and they are really not that tough they are not but we are we are afraid of them and many of these persons that complain about my voice and I'm yelling and this comes from a lot of Caucasian people because in reality my voice scares them they are not used to black men speaking like they have power. Now, we don't really have any power. Of course, we are under the control, the influence of the, of the children of the oppressor. But what if one day we begin to combine we begin, our mentality, our actions, begin to back up what we sound like. When you hear a lion roar, you don't have to see the lion, but you know, but just the fact that you hear a lion roar, you begin to start looking around because you understand the power and the threat and you know what a lion can do to you. So when I speak, 
and I speak the real truth that's coming behind that voice. They understand that that's power that can awaken the mind. Many black folks, we don't really trip off loud voices. I know I did. I, I come from a family. We all talk loud. And in the community, we talk loud. Black folks, we talk loud. Y'all know that. No yelling is. We like to yell and scream. That's how we talk. That's how we do things in the quote, quote, hood. We talk loud. When you go to church, you used to you. We are used to a pastor, a minister, preacher. They talk loud. We call it preaching. We call it teaching. The enemies and some of these Negroes that want to be white. Why are you screaming? Why are you yelling? Because they see that power. They see that. You see a reflection. We're talking about God in the church. We're talking about God in the mosque. We're talking about God wherever they, we can. Our voice reflects our actions. Our movements reflects God. We, it reflects power. And they don't want us to be like that. They want us to be weak. See, the difference between Caucasian people and a black man on the rostrum. I've seen Billy Graham. I've seen all these Caucasian men of the faith, pastors and preachers. I've seen, I watched a little of that uh, Republican uh, convention. I, I, I listened to a little Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan. And they sound so weak. They just clapping. They just clapping for the hell out of of it because there is no real emotion. There is no reflection of emotion. They they just talking. Their voice is not even strong. It's weak. And no matter how emotional a white man gets, no matter how hard a white man preach, when this when it's all said and done, they look weak. So they get jealous of Talik Ibn Ra. They get jealous of Jesse Jackson or Farrakhan or Malcolm. Any black man that stands on the pulpit that preaches and can do it for real. Because we are an expression. And actually we come from out of the soul. And we don't talk about it no more because we've lost our soul. We come from out of the essence, the, out of the darkness of creation. That's just who we are. And we have lost our soul living among the soulless. They don't have soul. They don't have a, a connection to the universe like you and I do. And that's what they have done to us living among an alien people they've taken your soul they are like dracula they suck your blood and now we run around here like vampires and zombies creatures of the night instead of being a part of the natural world of the night we become the living dead blood suckers like them oh Ooh, if there's a god you come and help us Mm, mm, mm. Woo. This Caucasian man in their society, European Western civilization, in their society, not African society, not the societies of dark people, in Western civilization, within their society, their culture, the, the men carry themselves in a feminine type manner just borderline homosexual then they cross over to the homosexual side that's just them so no matter how macho they try to portray themselves no matter how brave they still look weak that's why they fear the black man that's why they fear my voice 
They fear the voice that is combined with the truth that breaks their world, that exposes their lies and their deceit, their treachery, their hypocrisy, their being fake and fraud. Your smile don't mean nothing to me because I'm watching that knife you got hiding behind your back when I turn my back. So when you have power of the voice, and I haven't always, my voice have not always been this way. When I was younger, my voice was feminine-like, girly-like, and I really hated it. The young men that I was growing up with, as we were getting older, their voices was getting deeper. My voice stay feminine like, girly like. My voice sort of remind you of Michael Jackson. And I did not like that. I like Michael Jackson, but I did not like his voice. So every day I practice trying to put some bass in it, trying to get my voice stronger and stronger. So I keep doing it and would not allow myself to speak in that girly like type manner that. Don't have no bass in your voice. And so the voice that you hear today is a manufactured voice over a period of time. But if you catch me on a good day, some of those who know me, you might hear my real voice come out now and then because it's something that I have to always be aware of when I listen to myself, make sure that I keep that deep, tone in my voice. So the deep tone in my voice combined with the real truth that I represent is a has become an unstoppable force. There is no wisdom that I fear on YouTube. There is no opinion that I fear on YouTube. I love my brothers and sisters so I will help you spread your word because I don't anything that help black folks I'm right behind a witch. I'm not jealous of nobody here. But I'll tell you this also, when it's all said and done, the most powerful voice on YouTube is Angel Snub Nub 7. There is nobody more powerful. There's no other wisdom any stronger. Designed for today and tomorrow. 25 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now. The kingdom of God is in you. It's right here in your brain. Once you get rid of all this foolishness, stop, get out of that Caucasian mode. Get rid of black, get rid of African more. Get rid of all that stuff that belongs to this world. It is time now that you come into your real self. That Those things are not you. You don't understand. I know you don't. You don't understand. You still tripping about color. I'm not black. We are not black people. That's some crap designed by the oppressor. That comes from out of his world. That's not going to do you any good. Be who you are. You're not black. You way above a color. The color don't represent nothing. The color is representation of a slave. That's what the color was used to divide the family. And that's what happened. Also, all the people of the earth was divided up. That's what color, that's what, that's what that was designed for. That's not who you are. You're not a color. Color don't mean nothing. Because if you want to talk about black, black, Black can also represent death. Because I'm very sure you're not going to see any light once death falls upon you. So you can't trip about trip about a color because the creation is, or God, however you see, whatever brought us in, into being, it is all colors. We need to get away from this color garbage. It's about changing the mind. The mind of all human beings on this planet. 
and we may not even fall into the category of human beings that might not that's probably a bad description for us also because in the right state of mind you won't care anything about color but just like uh, Neely Fuller Jr. said it's about justice just bring justice let us be just as long as there is a absence of justice we are going to continue to live in this type of situation regardless if the white man is in power black man in power Chuck it don't make any difference without justice and that's the bottom line Woo. can you bear with me I'm almost done be patient we're gonna I know this is a video you can flip straight to the paperwork but I want to just spend a little time with us. So it is important. It was. It's important for the oppressor, the conquerors, those who want to keep you in a slave-like condition, want to keep you down and out. They don't want you to listen to power. They don't want you to be attracted to the yelling. Especially when that yelling is telling you the truth. Opening your eyes, causing you to see and accept your reality. So the wicked, the conquerors, the oppressors have no choice but to silence the power that's coming from the black man. So we need to kill Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We need to kill Malcolm X. We need to kill Mega Evers. We need to kill Nat Turner. We need to silence the voices of these powerful black men because they can fertilize and they can make rise more and more to get to the point whereas so many have arisen that if something is rising, somebody got to fall. And who's going to fall? Somebody that should never have been on top to begin with because they have the wrong mentality. You're a murderer. You're a rapist. you materialistic. You are, how, you are alien. You have an alien understanding. You are not. You are an enemy of this planet, animal life, and of human beings. And that's not me. That is your action, your own words, your own history. You tell us what you are. And everybody, including them, should be happy that another force that is just comes up to bring what many of us call peace finally to this planet. So, if you look at us living, the black community we are told that the black male is becoming extinct. That the black male is an endangered species. Physically, when you look at it, around the earth, the black male is not endangered. We are, we are not going extinct anytime soon. However, if you can destroy the, the mind of the male and turn that male's mentality and instead of influence, influencing that man, influencing that black young male, instead of influencing them to embrace their true manhood, you direct them toward homosexual behaviors, turn them to acting feminine, then you do make them mistake, you make them extinct mentally. And the male mind is endangered 
So you don't hear many young men, you don't hear those strong voices coming out of the black community anymore because they are destroying the minds of the black man and making little punks and little sissies and, it's, and it is acceptable and since the young girls ah, whoo, see the young girls don't know what a man is either and they sleep around with these young men who don't know what a man is then these young girls women produce babies and this this part of a man leaves them they can only teach that young boy that's left feminine ways I was so lucky I was raised around women I was a I was but see there should be something deep down inside of you that makes you and makes a young boy to know what a man is when he sees a man I didn't have to be around men physically to know what a man was and what a man was not. I could tell. But it has gone for so long, this feminization of the black male, the destruction of black men, because see, we are the warriors. But now you have these black men, it's so sickening to me. You see black men on YouTube crying and whining. Oh, these women won't do this. And these women do that. Oh, the feminism. Ain't no feminism can do nothing with no real man. Nothing. I don't worry about no feminism. Ain't no butch woman can do nothing against me. Hear me roar. Lady lions roar too. But when you hear that big male lion with the mane, everybody gets on the alert. What's up? What's up? Ain't no feminism. No, you have become a little sissy. You become a little punk. Because you don't know what a man is. And somebody like me scare you because you a little punk. And you're scared of the manhood that you should be, you should have inside of you, brothers. The woman needs a man. Children are a reflection of the mother. And the mother, the women are a reflection of the male. She does what she does, what she do to please her men. The women that you see in this society have been exploited by corrupt, unjust, sissified males. Who want slaves. Prior to black slavery. There was female slavery. And still there's female slavery. We will never. Have peace until there is justice. Justice for everybody. Man, woman or child. Children should be protected. Children also have rights. But children now in this society are being murdered and exploited, exploited, abused, neglected. Incompetent parents, incompetent society. Because the society is filthy, and vile, and profane. The young men believe going to school and, get a, and getting an education is enough. White man's education. Don't teach you nothing about yourself. The education don't give you any pride in yourself. It does not tell you about who and what you are. It's not designed to feed you. It's designed to give power to another man. So you speak powerless. So when you talk to white folks, you got to, you got to be careful 
about what you say. I've seen a lot of many Negroes talk all strong, talk all tough, but when they get around white folks, they get all silent and get to, they so humble and get to looking at the ground and standing and grinning. I will say and speak how I want to talk. I don't care who's around. I don't care what, what some sucker is around. Oh, he come up. I've talked to black. I've been around black men. And we're talking about the racist Caucasian people. And then the racist Caucasian people, I'm not prejudiced or hate white folks or anything like that, but I'm going to talk and tell the truth uh, and say what I want to say. They don't like it. Who told you to get into my conversation? But they walk in the room and the brother or the sister, they shh. They, their, voice, their voice get all quiet. You were not talking like that a few minutes ago or when it was just Negroes hanging around or whatever. As soon as Caucasian people come into the room, all of a sudden, you changing your speech and how you talk and you get all quiet. The hell with that. I'm a lion. Hear me roar. I'm not about that. That's fake. I'm going to talk to you and deal with you just like a man. Show you how I feel. I'm not going to try to be a trickster. You don't have nothing I want. And if you do have something that I want, and you think I'm going to sell myself out, I can do without. So you have these young boys. They see nothing wrong with their pants sagging, with their butt. Showing to other men. They're not trying. Who are you trying to attract? Women? You around other men with your butt cheeks hanging out. With your jaws showing. Because they have been turned into feet. You've been turned into females. You've been feminized. Next thing you know, you're going to be totally with the wrist broke. They dress in loud clothes like women used to dress. In loud clothes. When I was growing up. The basic color for, for men was black, brown, dark type colors. Now you got these young boys, pink and yellow, Daisy Duke. Oh, Lord. Can't you see that you all oh, jacked up? And they laughing at you. Don't listen to that man. He's hollering. He's screaming. No, I'm preaching and I'm teaching to you. And the power of the voice. They don't want you to. Listen. See. Just the voice of a. Hearing the voice of a man. It can awaken that spirit that's in you. Because you're looking for a man. You ain't looking for Jesus. Jesus don't exist. Never have. Never will. You're not looking for Muhammad. Because for us that don't exist. All these things don't exist for us. We have had real male examples. And they try to kill them all. Or they try to. They try to beat them down. And degrade them in the media. I want to say this. And bring. Our talk to conclusion. And we're going to. We're going to speak on. Uh. Our victory from Google. Get an education. That does not make you a man. When you don't know how to apply the education. And the education does not do anything for you as an individual. Or do anything for your community or your people. Just make some money so you can buy a house or a car or, or an Xbox. Money is supposed to benefit your family, your community, and your nation. Not the nation of somebody else that forced you onto their soil. Unless this is a real melting pot. And we know, of course, this is not. Everybody's out to try to get theirs. Except black folks. We... We are the dog, and these other suckers are the titch, are the ticks 
leeching off our blood. I want to say this to quote unquote men. How do you feel as a man? Come on now. We getting ready to talk now for real. And we're going to bring this to conclusion. And let me break it down. Let me talk about our victory in small claims court. I, but I, I want to talk to you about this. To men. See, I want to talk to men today because men have the power. And it don't take a lot of y'all now. It do not take a lot. We have the power to flip the script and turn this thing all the way around. Oh, yeah. And it don't take that much. See, oh, man, woo, you just don't know. You think, you think it takes a whole lot? No, it don't. How do you, how do we as a man, I wish I had my wallet with me, but I don't because I like to show you a couple of dollars. But anyway, you already know about the couple of dollars. The dollars in this country have the face of the white man on it. The Caucasian races, the, the racist Caucasian people on it. You know that. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, whatever. How can you be a a proud black man. How can you be a man? And when you reach in your pocket. And give to your children. And your wife. You're going to give them money. You don't put no value on the money. You just make it and spend it. What you do don't mean nothing. As a man. You taking money out of your pocket. Giving it to your wife and your children. And you. Have nothing to do with the creation of the money's value. And then you're giving the money to your wife and your children. And Abraham, not Abraham Lincoln, but he benefit. But George Washington and all these other suckers, Thomas Jefferson, they were slave owners. And then you're going to teach your babies. This is all so sickening to me. You're going to teach your babies that they are the father of, of your country. You're going to teach your babies these devils, these slave owners are their forefathers. How sickening, how pathetic and pitiful is that? And you don't think that you're not a slave? And then your baby is named Jefferson. Your baby is named Washington. You continuing to keep the names of your slave master, past slave master. You a man, you don't control nothing. You don't control government. You don't control the media. You just use everything. And you just a servant. Quote, unquote, reality check. Slave. That's what you are. Slave. Mm, mm, mm. Woo! Man, man, man. And these Negroes, skinning and grinning, I'm so proud to be an American. And don't control nothing. How many laws, you proud black American, you? <laughs> Tell me how many laws, you proud black American, how many laws have you as black Americans or even Chinese Americans or even any type of dark people in this country? How many laws have you created that Caucasian people obey as a people? They don't obey not one law, not even a misdemeanor, any kind of law. But you obey everything that they put out. Everything. It's their law. You have nothing to do with the creation of their law. You have nothing to do with the creation of their media or any of their systems of education. Anything. 
How can you be a man? That's because you are not a man. The black man of America, you are an illusion and you won't stand up for yourself. You will not war. In fact, I would like to ask the black man in this country, can you roar? Because if you roar, the white folks, the Caucasian people are going to tell you, why are you yelling? Why are you angry? The angry black man. Because see, when you begin to roar, that means I'm going to raise my voice and I'm going to talk to you like a man. And you're going to treat me like a man. I'm not going to hold no sign saying I am a man. No, you're going to know what you're dealing with. Just like when a lion roar, you know what you're dealing with. When I talk, when I stand, no matter what I say or do, you're going to respect this. I don't have to tell you I'm a man. You're going to know it. Because this lion, you're going to hear roar. There is no melting pot. If there was a real melting pot in this country, then you do have a leg to stand on. Because in a melting pot, then that means people are sharing. This is a team effort. But there is no team effort going on here. Everything that is going on benefits somebody. And the least one who is getting the benefit is the black man and woman in America. You can tell by your community you ain't got nothing. But people can come into your community and become super rich. Just like they did when our ancestors were slaves. They became super rich. Why is everybody getting super rich coming into the black community? Because the black community is still a community of slaves. You talking about slavery was a long time ago. No, Negro, you are a slave, even worse slave than our ancestors was 400 some years ago. Physical slaves. You even worse because you got an Xbox. Because you drive a fancy car with some pretty clothes. Because you married a Caucasian man. Because you married a Caucasian woman. You think you're not a slave. You even in worse condition than our ancestors were. In fact, you are even in worse condition than they were when they were marching during the 60s. You have really gone down and don't even realize it. And that's the sad thing. You don't even realize it. Oh man, it's just so, it's so sickening. It's so, woo! But, a change is a coming. Because if a change was not coming, I would not be here. If a change was not coming, you would not hear all these beautiful voices of manhood and sisterhood on YouTube. If a change was not a coming, this is your time. You suffered enough. Mm, mm, mm. I had to uh, take a slight break and now I'm back. Hopefully, I remember where I left off. As you get older, the mind becomes more senile. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh let us now bring our conversation to its conclusion which will result in my showing us the paperwork that has made us not just me has made us proud showing what we can do with tenacity, persistence, and just sheer will. That's, this victory is nothing compared to what we can attain if we work together as a unit. Oh man, you just don't know. But I believe I was speaking about how can you be a man? And you control nothing. You living in a nation. You know you have nothing to do with none of this. You want to put claims on it. 
And some of these Caucasian people, when they get angry at us, they would tell you, you don't have nothing to do with this country, except your ancestors were slaves. They'll tell you when they get angry. They'll put you in your place. And speaking of putting somebody in their place, I wanted to mention this earlier upon the subject matter. I wanted to talk about my grandfather when I was a young boy. I, I myself have never picked cotton. When I was a little boy, I picked cotton for the fun of it. My mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins did not pick cotton for the fun of it. That is how they made their living. They had to pick cotton. My grandparents were sharecroppers. And of course you know, sharecropping was a tool where black folks got caught up renting Caucasian person's land. And of course, they did not get their fair share of the profits. And then they always owed and always was in debt to these suckers. They never could pay them off. I don't know, I was too little, I did not understand and don't know the finances of my grandparents, but I do know and I have learned through history books and writings that sharecropping was a way that the racist Caucasian people kept black folks in a slave-like condition. And then later on, when we were able to purchase our own lands, they still came behind us to trick deceive and steal those lands. Many brothers and sisters, especially in the South, our grandparents had acres and acres of land. We barely have anything today because, first of all, since we were not taught our history, we do not value land. We do not value these resources. We value nothing. We are drunks, crackheads, and dope fiends. We don't care nothing. This is all ours. You own nothing. So the oppressor ends up getting all this right back what our grandparents suffered and, and worked so long and hard for. Silly people! You know why? Because you're a slave. Like my grandfather. My grandfather, I remember, I was playing in the cotton and pretending to pick cotton and when I was a little boy. And one day, I saw this Caucasian man come onto my grandfather's property. I was small and I did not know what was going on, but I remember this day as clear as if it happened right now. This Caucasian guy gotten out of his car, start talking to my grandfather, and I'm looking at my grandfather and I noticed my grandfather, who had a powerful voice, he was the power in his house. He controlled his wife and he controlled his children and he controlled his grandchildren. But this Caucasian man coming from out of nowhere, he made my grandfather look down at the ground and my grandfather start telling him about how the cotton is growing and how the corn is doing and the peaches and whatever. I thought that was real strange being a young boy. Here is my power. Here's my grandfather. Here's the man of the house. But when this sucker come and talk to him, my grandfather started looking down at the ground. Something, I was a little boy, something here wrong. What is it? Why is my grandfather bowing down to this sucker? I didn't understand that being a young child. I don't know how old I was, maybe seven or eight at the max, something like that. I was a young child. But that, that was mind-boggling to me. And they still do it today. You're supposed to be a free man, free woman, and y'all still, when white folks come, you gotta, you watching and careful about what you say, what you do. Scratching where you don't eat, slobbing at the mouth. Being careful what you say, because you don't want to offend them. The hell with trying to offend them. They have offended us for 400 years. And we have a right 
to talk about the abuse, the trickery, the murder, and the continued evil that they do to us today. I can't be 17 years old and walk down the street with a bag of Skittles and iced tea and somebody shoots me down because they think I'm a criminal because I wear a hoodie. What kind of madness is that? And then these same Caucasian people that claim they represent justice and what is fair, they going to send the killer. I ain't never heard of nothing like this. You're going to send a murder thousands and thousands of dollars. This should tell us something and y'all want to live here with them. Oh, man. Woo! I would rather be riding in the grave than continue to live like y'all want to live, like slaves, like boys and girls, and they still call you boys and girls. And for y'all women out there, here you are, you're a grown woman, and they call y'all girls. Come get the girls. Ain't this woman 30 years old? Ain't she 25? Ain't she over 18? And y'all still calling these women girls, and y'all just sniggling, gr grinning, and skinning, and grinning, and then you take off your clothes with your little thong, and you jump on a pole and swing around for these old stupid, immature men, because they, they have a little money. Because you are a woman slave, you're a slave to, to men in this male-dominated society with crazy, insane men because a real man don't want to see his woman swinging on no pole or play or posing in Playboy. You want your woman in the best light that she can be because she reflects you and what your society is and who you are. She's the mother of your babies. Oh, y'all. Can't you understand that this world that you live in is sick? These are some sickening, vile, profane, nasty people. They brag about how they suck on the penis and lick vagina. That's sodomy, people. Sodomy. Sodomy also includes messing around, trying to call yourself have sex with animals. It's sodomy. Religious teachings. Both Bible and Quran have a problem with sodomy. But when you live in filth for so long, stink becomes sweet. When you live in filth for so long, the stench of the sewer is all right. Because you was born into it, it's all that you know. It's sewer life. And that's what our problem is. We don't know how it feels to be clean. You talk about being righteous, but you really don't know what it is. You talk about being holy, but you don't know what it is. Y'all don't know nothing about being clean. When somebody's being clean, you look at them like they have a problem. Like they're crazy. How come you ain't having sex with everybody that you meet? How come you don't have a dog in the house? How come you don't eat pork? You know, when you see somebody that's outside of your filth, they are clean. It's mind-boggling to you because you thought being clean was living in filth, living in the sewer, thinking in the sewer. So the black man, how can you be a man when you have to hold up a sign and tell somebody? You have to hold up a sign and tell somebody that you're a man. <laughs> the education, y'all educated men. And the education that you're getting, the only thing it does is it, it uh, gives you experience, shows you how to do a particular job. But it, the education that you're getting does not educate you on being a black man because you don't know what that is. And the enemy, the oppressor of whom you get your college degree from, the education is designed to benefit his world that you have nothing to do with the creation or building of. You are just here. I want to bring this to conclusion. This is not a melting pot. Now y'all can smoke pot and you do a good job at doing that. Y'all like smoking pot and drinking beer and getting drunk and high. 
Y'all do that real well. That's why you're not. That's not. That's why you're not strong. That's why you can't roar like a lion. That's why you can't deal with me. You can't deal with power. But see, if you was a real lion, you you would respect the power of another lion because we all on the same team. And speaking of team, a melting pot is supposed to be like a team. This is a team effort. We all in this together. And if we all in this together, then you should see a sharing, equal sharing of the pot. But you don't. You see the Caucasian people have their, their share. You see the Mexicans get their share and the Native Americans and the Chinese and Asians and whomever, the Filipinos, whomever, everybody's out getting their, their share. What they can just grab. There is no equal share. It's supposed to be a melting pot. But there is no equal share in the pot. Even for those who are supposed to be doing good. Because the main beneficiary of whatever comes in this pot is Caucasian people. Because first of all, they are the majority of population. And then they are going to get be the greatest benefactors of the pot because they created the pot. They control what goes in the pot and what goes out of the pot. You, Mexicans and Chinese, all these other people that's part of this pot, y'all don't mean nothing. So the smart ones come in, grab what they can out of the pot, take it back home. That's doing something smart. But the ignorant, the dumb suckers stay here and talk about God bless America, land that I love. I'm a dumbass. I don't care nothing about my country. I'm a Benedict Arnold, so my, my country out. Now I'm here. I'm a proud American. You cannot serve two masters. Either you serve the devil or you serve God. That's what they say in religion. You can't have, you can't serve two masters. So you have these idiots that's talking about, I love China, but I also love America. You can't love both of them because they different. So you can take that lie somewhere else. You can take that crap to somebody else, but it don't G here. And I'm not going to let you get away with that dumb stuff. You just a Benedict Arnold. You just pathetic. You don't have no pride in your, in your, in who you are. I can understand black folks all messed up because we were made deaf, dumb, and blind, robbed of the knowledge of self, made to hate ourselves. But what's your problem? You got to come all the way to America to get a job, to have some type of opportunity. Why didn't you stay and fight on your own land? Then come here and try to make fun of black folks. I dare you to come my way with that crazy stuff. Ugh. When you part of a team, like a football team, everybody on the team shares the glory. The people on the bench, now correct me if I'm wrong because I, I don't know a lot about football, but I heard that even the people on the bench, if the football team win the Super Bowl, everybody get a ring because this is a team effort. Now, you might not be the superstar. You was on the field, but I'm part of this melting pot. I'm part of this team. Give me my Super Bowl ring, too. <laughs> you understand? But here you are. Black man and woman in America. You part of the melting pot. Where is your ring on your finger? Ain't nobody married you. Why should I marry you? Why should I buy the cow and I can get the milk for free? That's why nobody respects the black man and woman in America because we just give ourselves away for free. Nobody has to earn nothing. We just give ourselves to anybody at any time. Everybody got black woman booty everywhere because we just give our, give our women away. 
They just give themselves away for little or nothing for a few crumbs. You have no have no shame, no respect. You have no value on yourself. Oh. But there's voices, not just my voice, but there's man voices crying in the wilderness, screaming and hollering, I don't care, as long as I get heard with a message to waken up the masses. Oh, yeah. That's what they fear. Because when you're hollering, when you're screaming, then I'm trying to be heard. And that's why they have a problem with anybody that's speaking any kind of truth. They don't want these who have been tricked, these who have been deceived, these who are being exploited. They don't want them to hear a voice that telling them that they are being used. Because once people realize they are being manipulated, that they are being used, then if they have any kind of sense, they won't allow that anymore. So stop talking about these sisters. Straighten up the black man. And if you straighten up this black man, ain't no feminism, ain't no butchism, ain't no ismism. If this black man, this lion begins to roar, once you learn how to roar, there's nothing, no stopping you. And then you can, then you can influence these women or you can, cre can create females that we need in this struggle. Let them go to hell with their massa. You don't need them. There's a baby girl, there's women born every day. Not only born physically, but there are women out there whose minds is ready. They just need to hear the voice of a man. The woman needs to hear the voice of a man, not these little sissies on YouTube crying and whining. Oh, the women do this and the women do that. You look, you make men, black men look so terrible. And you really think you're doing something. And the reason why these women are like that is because they are influenced and they are controlled and educated by a conqueror. And instead of challenging the conqueror, you would rather jump on the women when they are the victim. Challenge the racist Caucasian male. But that's too much work. It's easier to go on YouTube and make a, vic a video and cry, you little sissified bum. Don't bring that to me. I know better. There is nowhere in our history where black men cry and whine about women. Nowhere. After feminism, before feminism, whatever, in, whatever what any ism, ism, whatever. You just been made a little sissy. And I'll be damned if I'm going to join you. Lord knows I'm not brave. Lord knows I'm not some hero. I'm not, I haven't done nothing special in my life. But I refuse to go that low like some of y'all have done. That's really pathetic and cowardly and weak. And my voice demonstrates I'm not that weak. I'd rather be dead stanking in the grave than be like some of y'all. Woman bashers. I love black women. I love black children. I love black men. I love black people. I'm not going to sit around bashing y'all when I know who is at the root cause of it. We can blame ourselves by staying in that condition because time has now determined there's too much information for us to stay in this condition. It's now time for us to rise. Let us rise. Or just accept the fact that you and I, we just some good slaves. <laughs> Woo. All right. Now, I'm going to bring us to the part, very, very short and <clears throat> brief. Make this quick. I want to show us. <clears throat> 
See, somebody told me that you can't sue Google and win. Somebody done told you wrong, punk. <laughs> Somebody done told him wrong. <laughs> Stop it! Stop. Now, hold on. <laughs> Somebody done told you wrong, punk. They are a big, large corporation and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm going to repeat the famous words of Martin Lawrence. Well, somebody done told you wrong. <laughs> if this is the edited version of the video, I'm going to slide that in there. <laughs> somebody done told you wrong. This is the second time that I tried suing Google. Second time. Here is the I don't know if you can see it or not. Try to hold it up to the camera. This is the. That's the first time I tried to sue Google. I served them by certified letter. I don't know if you can see that good or not. Okay. This is the uh, receipt. The second time I try to sue Google, can you see that? Okay, I don't know if you can see that pretty good, but the same person, Susan Gwynn or Gawain or something like that, she's the one that accepted the uh, certified letter. This is the envelope. Okay, you want to see that? That's the court. Okay, that's the court. This is in in uh, in uh, Illinois. They make it very easy, very easy to follow small claims. Okay, here we go. Talik Ibrahim. Let me see if I can get that out the way now. See that? Small claim. Let me see. Did I get that up there? In the Circuit Court, Judicial St. Clair County, State, Illinois, versus Google. Google. Okay. It's filed in St. Clair County. Y'all see that? Okay. $5,000. That's what I'm suing them for. $5,000. Go this way. Okay. Can you see that? And I, I'm telling them, the court, that Google and violated my rights, making false claims of um, hate speech, civil rights uh, violation. Okay. Now this is the this is the judgment. This is a copy. It's not very clear, but I'm going to try to get it close to the camera so that you can see. Okay. St. Clair County. See that? Talik Ibn Ra versus Google. That's the court stamp right there. And what we really want to read is here on the bottom. Let's see if I can try to get the best, the best, uh, cause is set for hearing 
October the 8th to talk about the damages. And that's it. That's it. So, brothers and sisters, it's all right to holler black power family and talk about killing white folks. We should learn from history, especially from the Black Panther Party and actually from our history period. Any resource, anything that the oppressor gives you that you can take advantage of, you should do that. Now, can you imagine what's going to happen? I want y'all to follow behind me. Those of you who have had your channels terminated or whatever, see, I have evidence. I had the evidence to support my case. You have to, you have screensaver technology, do everything that you can to say the evidence, file your claim against Google. Not only black people, but I want y'all, anybody that's out there who, are, who is getting false flagged and they are, the Google is charging and, and telling the public that you are teaching hate or whatever, make them go to court and prove it. That's the bottom line. Go to court and prove it. They won't be able to if you have the right evidence. This ministry has never taught no hate speech. I don't hate nobody. Never have. But I have to tell you the truth. I have to tell you what the root of things are. What happened how things, where things come from. If black folks are the problem, then I have to tell it. I have to say it that way. And many of you who have listened to me, many of you don't like what I have to say about uh, this black thing. We are not black people. That's something that comes from out of white supremacy. Black supremacy is a consequence and comes from uh, out of white supremacy. It's nothing but a form of white racism. See? So, see, I say things a lot of folks don't like. But the bottom line is all of us should want justice. If you are Caucasian, if you're, if you're Asian, if you're Indian, whatever it is, we should want justice. Because without justice, you'll never have any kind of peace. Are you sick of, of war and poison air and poison water and all these things make your life just miserable? Then we should fight once and for all against the forces of evil together, not somebody trying to take an advantage for their family and for who they are and their people. No, you, the righteous should fight the unrighteous. That's how it should go. Those who are just need to fight to the death with those who are unjust. And the only way we can find out, put the cards on the table and see who is real and who is fake. Just like my brother J.T. Riley once says, there's only two kind of people. Either you're real or you fake. I am as real as you're going to get. I want you to prove to me and show me how I'm fake. Because if I'm fake, then I want to do everything I can. I want to show you. I want to get real. I don't want to be fake. This victory that has happened with the reality of temple is not just a victory for me. But it's a victory for all black channels that have been terrorized on this media. Keep it coming. Don't you know that I fought the state of Missouri for 10 years? I know about criminal proceedings and I know about civil proceedings. Let us do this. Let us roll. I'm not afraid of Google. I don't care about Google or any of these other suckers. And if you mess with me, I'll sue yo. <laughs> I would. And that's why a lot of these racist Caucasians start backing off of me back in the day. Because they know I'm not playing with you. I'm not here to play with you. Now you can play with so-and-so and y'all can go back and forth calling each other childish names. I'm going to kick the real. Bring it to me. I fought the whole state of Missouri for 10 years. What I care about Google. I don't care about fighting and I don't give up. If there's a will, there's a way. I keep trying. They want you to say that it's impossible. Well, I just done the impossible. They told me they was going to keep me locked up all my life. I'm here talking to you. I like the fight. 
and that's the way we should be in black revolution and black liberation. Sometimes you have to make a sacrifice. You have to you have to do some suffering. Whatever it takes. Some of us gonna have to die in the cause. But the end result is you are gonna get this beast off your back once and for all. And that's what I want. That's what that's what you should want. So brothers and sisters, this is our victory. And I want to see what Google going to do. Bring it on, Google. Because you know they devils, they demons. They're going to come up with something else. But bring it on. I see you in court again and again and again. And whatever other avenue that we can find to deal with this vicious demon. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. I really enjoyed our talk. I didn't think I had too much to say. But it's been over an hour. But I like talking with us, and like I said, this might be the last time, who knows? Tomorrow is not promised to anybody, but hopefully anything that I leave, whoever listens to whatever I leave, I hope that it benefits and helps the struggle of us as a people finally becoming free. Because after 400 some years, brothers and sisters, black man and woman of America, you deserve, you ain't did nothing to deserve to be punished and mistreated the way we have been mistreated and punished for all these years. It is about time that you get a reward. It's about time that justice, justice comes to us. It's about time that we experience heaven from living in this hell for so long. We ain't deserve to be punished like this. And if there is justice, the justice has determined and it has decided that now is the time that we rise up from the ashes that we be brought from a dead state to that which life come from up out of the sewers and filth now we come up and in fact we would be the callous and be the perfect examples for the rest of humanity around the earth on what living righteous and holy really is because we came from out of the mud and we can show others how to come up out of the mud and they were not even as low in the mud as we have been so thank you so much thank you for uh, sharing this information thank you for filing your own small claims and spread this information out let us not sit around and let Google bully us and try to silence the voice of words that our people need in order to be inspired and take the proper actions so that we can be the great people in our hearts and the loving people that we really are. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Tali Gibbon Ra. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. <laughs> Somebody done told you wrong, punk. Somebody done told him wrong. Stop it! Stop it. Hold on. <laughs> Somebody done told you wrong, punk. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host. Known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and perhaps many other places, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. While I had this on my mind, I just wanted to share this quick thought with those who uh, like to conversate with me, who like to interact with me and share information with me. This is how we become smarter. This is how we become more mature. This is how we become more wise when we visit and we interact with one another, especially when we are attempting to seek the same 
common goal and we share the same common purpose and of course that common goal should be the upliftment of those of whom are the descendants of slaves born in America and what we have in common is that we are of African origin or that which was called African or that which is called Africa or black and we have suffered under the same type of oppression we face the same type of problems and we live in the same type of areas and right now we know that those areas are not too uh, not too uh, good it's not a very uh, vibrant environment it's not a safe like environment it's not a real good environment for us to live in but it's just a place and men and women with the right state of mind and those whom love that which they come from can change that environment making a ghetto or that which is called ghetto you can take a ghetto and transform it into a kingdom you can transform it to be the catalyst or an example of what the world should be like if the people in the ghetto have a change of heart and change their behaviors their minds and attitudes and instead of destruction they begin to build when they begin to love themselves and love where they origin from but of course as you know the black man and woman born in America we lack those skills we lack love for self we have become lazy and we have become trifling we have become not all of us but we as a people because the condition tells us this it is not something that I'm making up it's not something that I'm trying to degrade or make mockery about us it is our reality it is now time for us to come together and change that reality but there are forces around us that like us to be in the condition that we are in that is those or those who benefit from our being in a bad condition thus if we try to change that condition then they would do all they can to try to keep us in that horrid condition because they benefit and they leech off our blood sweat and tears they leech off our suffering so this brings me to this train of thought in order to change the mentality of a people in order to change the behaviors of a people they must be talked to and we have many forms of communication I can speak with you in person I can talk to you through pen and paper I can talk to you through the internet I can talk to you through the media there are many ways in which we can communicate with one another so we can know one another not guess about who and what we are but we can talk to one another face to face YouTube has become a wonderful place for us to talk as a black people or so-called black people in fact if it was not for YouTube you would not know who I am and you could care less about me you would not even probably know that I even existed so YouTube has become a very important and vital place for the so-called true black revolutionary for all of us can come on this channel and we can share information so at the same time for those who wish us to continue to be in a bad state they don't like us talking to one another this goes back to slavery when slaves used to come together and they did not like seeing the oppressor the slave masters did not like seeing the slaves gathering together talking and communicating to one another sharing information because sharing information sharing knowledge knowledge is power knowledge is power that gains you freedom not just privileges but gains you true freedom when you get the correct knowledge when you get the correct information when you are inspired correctly not to not to integrate with the oppressor 
and help build and make his life beautiful, but for us to come together and build so that we can become just as beautiful as the oppressor and go beyond our oppression. So they know that YouTube is a vital and important place for us to gather and talk with one another. So as you can see, there is an attack upon black oriented channels. Those channels that teach black history, those channels that teach us uh, different and various things in relation to solving our problems in our communities, in the hood, for say, wherever we are at. And when we come together and when we, when we, and when we try to discuss our situation and try to solve our problems, because this is YouTube and you have others that's nosy wondering what you're going to do. Here are our people of whom they call savages. We don't mean nothing, but every time you turn around, white folks and others are always listening, wondering what we're saying, what we going to do. You should wonder why they so interested. If we are, if we suffer low IQ, if we are such messed up as you say, we're nothing but welfare recipients and drunks or however they view us, watermelon eaters. If we are all these things, why are you always in our business? Why are Caucasian people, racist pink people and others always messing with black folks? Because they understand, they know your importance, but we don't. So when we begin to share this information, then we begin to go outside of their lies and their deceit, their deception, all those things they do to try to mentally keep us down. So everything that the black man and woman on YouTube, everything that we say, they false flag these channels and call our conversations hate speech. And of course, many of you know what it means when, uh, when with the definition hate. I hate an apple. You dislike an apple. Uh, you hate an orange. And you hate steak and potatoes. You know what it means when we say hate. I, I hate you. I really dislike you. I despise you. So that is against YouTube's terms of service violation for hate speech. But of course, as you know, it is very rare that black people come on YouTube and cry foul talking about they hate so-and-so and hate this and that. Now, what YouTube really means when it comes to the black man and woman that are trying to express themselves on YouTube, when they false flag us and they terminate our channels due to hate speech, what they mean by hate, it is not what you think. What they mean by hate, it is their hate. Their hate that you are trying to learn about your history as being or coming from an African people. Listening, you're not listening to their media no, no more. You're going outside of Caucasian influenced media. When we speak, we are exposing the world to the reality of this racist society that they always bragging about. They hate that you're coming together because you don't want to you don't want nothing to do with them anymore. You want to be able, and you don't invite them to the conversation. You're talking amongst each other. They hate that. They hate that you no longer, first of all, you realize that other people are leeching off of us as a people. They hate that you are realizing that these ticks are on your back and you want to get these ticks off your back. They hate the fact that you are studying and your mind is going outside of the educational systems and the media influence that they present to you day in and day out. They have kept us in a slave-like condition for all these years. They hate that we come together trying to iron out our problems, conversating among ourselves so that we can make the black man love the black woman again. So the black woman can love her children and this black family can become stronger. That's what they hate. They hate that we are destroying the stereotypes that they have put in movies and magazines and in the history books. 
we are greater, more intelligent than those things. That's why they don't know how to handle somebody like Angel Snuffin' Up Seven because a black man, a black person is supposed to be dumb and foolish and 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 don't have it together, lack of of severe intelligence, especially if you don't have their education. Then above all this, they hate that we come together and remind the racist American people, pink people, that this country called the United States of America was built by criminal activity. Slavery was criminal. Jim Crow was criminal. And there are many other things that we're finding out that you're done, low down and dirty in the dark, giving us syphilis on purpose. This is an evil. How many Native American people, how many Mexicans, how many blacks did you kill in order to form the United States of America and then you honor your forefathers? We're realizing that we're dealing with criminals and they hate this. So it is not that we're talking hate speech, it is the fact that they hate that you're waking up and once you become awoken or awaken, then there's nothing that can stop you going up. And if somebody going up, somebody got to go down. And guess who going down? And they are going down as I speak. Think about it. Is it really hate speech? Not for you and me, but it is for them because they hate that now we're going to start and trying to do good. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Talik Imara, and I'm Audi 5000. <laughs> Somebody done told you wrong, punk. <laughs> Somebody done told him wrong. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it. Hold on. <laughs> Somebody done told you wrong, punk. <laughs> <laughs>